Raise your voice. Say it again one more time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For the privilege of being in your presence. Amen. Amen. I will call it a apostolic visitation that we have in the house this morning. Amen. What apostolic visitation? They are unique visitation from the apostle of God. You welcome many people in your life. You don't know sometimes who you are welcoming, and it's very dangerous. In the book of Hebrew, chapter 13, verse 2, I heard Paul saying, Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. For by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Amen. Amen. If you don't know the fellow that is sitting next to you, say, welcome. Maybe you are an angel. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There is a way you welcome people. You can welcome people in the flesh. That means nothing will happen. If you welcome people in the spirit, a lot of things will happen. You don't need 10,000 visitation. You need one visitation that will turn around your position. The church of Galatians understood this. They said to Paul, from the book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse 14. Listen to what they said to Paul. This is what Paul is saying. Even told my illness was a trial to you, you did not treat me with contempt or scorn. Instead, you welcomed me as if I were an angel of God. You welcomed me as if I were Christ Jesus himself. There is a way you need to know to welcome the man of God. Paul was not Jesus, but look what he's saying. You welcome me as if I were Jesus himself. You welcome me as if I were an angel of God. The way you welcome men in your house will determine your future. The way Abraham welcomed the three men, I believe it was God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Praise God, Abraham had a good sight. He said, these people are not common people. He bowed low to welcome them. He offered them water to drink, water to wash their feet, bread to eat. And that was the first time God is eating the hand of man. And the reproach of Sarah came to an end. Barrenness was converted to fruitfulness from that day on. He said, I will come back. By this time next year, your wife will have a son. And it came to pass. Just one visitation. Somebody will have an encounter in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Why we, do we need apostolic visitation? Paul said from the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 15. How can anyone preach unless they are sent? An apostle of God don't go by his own will. He's moving as a result of the word that was spoken to him. Go. They are sent of God. How can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful 
are the feet of those who bring good news. Say this with me. The feet of those who bring good news are beautiful. I cannot hear you. Say it loud and clear. I thought you would say the feet of those who bring good news are ugly. They are what? Beautiful. The feet of those who bring good news are beautiful. The feet of the man of God today in this house is what? Beautiful. God has given Dr. Andrew Volmaras the priestly duty of proclaiming the gospel of God so that the Gentiles might become an offering acceptable to God, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. That is what Paul says in the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 16, NIV. If you are the one that will become an offering acceptable to God, because not every offering is acceptable to God. If you are the one that will become an offering acceptable to God, sanctified by the Holy Spirit, let me always shout louder and clear, Hallelujah! Amen. Amen. You know, I'm talking about apostolic visitation. Apostolic what? <laughs> Cornelius said to Peter, it was good for you to come. What is unique with apostles is that they carry the presence of God. They carry the power of God. They carry the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And they go anywhere with the Holy Spirit. So you listen to me carefully. Cornelius said to Peter, it was good of you to come. Now, we are all here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. We are here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. Act Chapter 10, verse 33. The moment you get into Act chapter 10, verse 44, the Bible says, while Peter was still speaking this word, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. Don't forget about this. Cornelius is a prayerful man. He prayed like no one business. But God did not tell him the next things to do. For him to do the next things, he have to hear this good news from Peter. And when Peter began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them as it came on the day of Pentecost. While Peter was still speaking this word, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The Holy Spirit came upon who? I don't hear you. The Holy Spirit came upon who? Upon those who heard the message. So you need to open your ears, your spiritual ears, open your hearts, and hear what God is saying to his servant. Hallelujah. Amen. I know many of us here are physically in the house of God, but spiritually you're still in the pick and pay. You are in the spa. Where is the range of cock? Where is the range of bread? Oh, some of you, you physically you are here, but spiritually you forget your bank card. Hey, you forget your, your purse with money. Hey, everything about you is there, but we have only your body here. Don't do that. Come back and come here Amen. and hear the word of the Lord. Amen. The Holy Spirit will not pass you by in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. You know what is wonderful? 
What is wonderful is that in the book of Genesis, chapter 33, verse 10, Jacob said to Esau, if I found favor in your eyes, accept this gift from me, for to see your face is like seeing the face of God. To see your face is like seeing the face of God. Dr. Erin, to see your face is like seeing the face of God. My brothers and sisters, my children, my uncle, my mom, stand up on your feet. Welcome the man of God in the house of God. He's coming to preach the word of God. You can't do it better than that. Thank you so much. Yabonga, Yabonga. Yabonga, thank you. By a donkey, thank you. You may be seated in heavenly places. First of all, I want to thank your pastor, Dr. Shiko, and his wonderful wife, Dr. Francine, for this great opportunity to be with you in this wonderful house of the Lord, to be here present with this anointing, because the anointing was here when I came, and I just walked into a wall of anointing, just inside, right here, it's filled, filled with the Spirit of God. Filled, 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 filled. There is an anointing that's on your pastor that is taking him all over the world to preach a gospel that is unique, a unique fingerprint of God that is on this man of God. And I have a word of the Lord before I start. It's for your pastor. Pastor, the Lord says to you, as you have poured out yourself in prayer and poured out yourself and poured out yourself and poured out yourself in prayer, so you will be filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit a full manifestation without measure. Amen. To walk in the power of the Holy Spirit that you have desired. To even walk in the office of the prophet. For when you speak, your words shall come to pass. Amen. And what you see, I have given you. And your dreams at night and your visions, the Lord says, is of Him. And He's raising you to a new level because your heart is pure. Amen. And your motives are right. And you have sacrificed for the kingdom's sake. And the Lord will have those who have spoken against you know this, that His hand of approval and blessing is upon you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, by the authority of the head of the church, Rise and walk in the office to which you have been called, appointed to, and fulfill the purpose and the plan of God for your life. 
In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So, can I take a moment and tell you where I come from? Is that okay? So, I was born in Durban. I went to university in Durban, University of Natal, Howard College. And then I went to London. I worked as a diplomat for South Africa in London. I came back. And I went to Rhema Bible School the very first year it opened. Pastor Ray McCauley had 16 people, only 16 people in his house, and I was one of them. I took my family to Valcom, Orange Free State, and we planted a church. Nine years, 7,500 people got born again, baptized in water, and filled with the Spirit. 7,500 in nine years. In Valcom. 28 churches started from Valcom all over Africa. My son in the Lord that was born again in our church became the dean of my Bible college. We sent him to Cape Town. We paid for him to go. Gave him my Bible college that I had prepared. His name is Paul Daniel. He raised the church called His People with 30,000 people in Cape Town and 48 churches around the world. 28 campuses across South Africa with Bible colleges was raised up. We raised up a church in Bluefontein. We had a Bible college in Bluefontein. In the first year of that church, a young man by the name of At Bosov got born again. And he went through our Bible college. And that year I did the graduation of the Bible college and I graduated At Bosov, who is now the senior pastor and apostle of Christian revival centers across South Africa. My grandson. A man in my church said he wanted to take care of the people that were homeless and drunk and drug addicts. He came out of my Bible college in Valco. His name was Derek, his wife's name Judy. So we gave him the first alcoholic that came into the church. He put him in his home. Soon there was 10. Next there was 20 people. They used to take the whole row. All sober, delivered, healed, filled with the Holy Ghost, saved, baptized in water. We had to move into a farm outside of Valcom because there was 300 people. Sleeping in tents. We moved them to Ermelo for a farm. Then they moved from there down to Durban. They took up an entire city block. A whole city block in Point Road, Durban Harbor. We had 1,000 people living off the street, free from drugs, free from alcohol, free from prostitution free from the, the, the devil's work, filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in water, talking in tongues, saved, feeding them three times a day, had a Bible college right there in Point Road for the prostitutes and the drug addicts that came off the street. In five more years, we had 30 arcs. We called that the ark, like Noah's ark. We had 30 of them in South Africa. One in England, one in Europe, one in America. And then 27 years ago, the Lord spoke to my heart. And he said, America needs you more than Africa. I want you to go and mission, do a mission work in America. Hmm. I thought all the mission work is in Africa. 
He said, I want you to go to America. 27 years ago, we went to. We've established two churches in America. And God has blessed it. And now I'm coming back to share the good news with you. God is good. Can we give God a good praise? And Apostle Theo is my brother in the flesh. And it was through his salvation, six weeks after that, that I came to Christ. So he is my brother, but he is my father in the Lord. And now my daughter, Pastor Cindy, sends her love to you. Amen. Amen. Are you blessed? Yes. Are you really blessed? Yes. Now I'm asking if you are really blessed. Yes. Are you grateful? Yes. Are you thankful? Yes. You're sure? Yes. So can I give you a new Christian greeting anytime anywhere somebody asks you how are you don't just say i'm well don't just say i'm blessed say i am blessed and grateful can you do that stand on your feet go find five people ask them how are you and let them tell you i am blessed and grateful All right. Thank you. You may be seated. All the blessed and grateful ones, you may be seated. All right. Now let me begin for today. The Lord gave me a word for South Africa. And the word is this. Dare to hope South Africa. Dare to hope, South Africa. Now, I know that there are problems in South Africa. There are problems all over the world. All nations have their problems. So I am not going to talk about the problems because I believe the Christians are praying and things are changing. I want to talk to us about our problems. Our problems. You see, some of us have such problems that when we look down the tunnel, it looks like the light has gone out at the end of the tunnel. It looks like I'm hanging at the end of my rope. I have nothing left to give. It feels like Jesus is asleep in my storm. It feels like I have no hope. In fact, I know in my heart that there are people here today that have said, I think I must just give up. I can't go on anymore. I have a word for you from the Lord. Now, the first thing is this. I need to give you a warning, like a medical doctor. To diagnose your condition. Your condition is very serious. You may not know how serious it is, but if you truly have lost hope, the Bible says you have a sick heart. A sick heart. And if your heart is sick, you can end up in hospital. You can end up in the ICU. You can end up in the emergency room because you have a sick condition. And you don't even realize you have a sick condition. In Proverbs 13 and verse 12, it says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when dreams come true, at last there is life and joy. 
So hope deferred means you're hoping for something to happen, but it doesn't happen. And it keeps going away. It doesn't happen. You stay sick. You stay poor. Things are difficult. There's problems at home, problems with the children. And your heart gives up. It gets sick. So now we have three choices. Number one, the first choice is, I can just keep trying to do what I'm doing. I can just try and stay on top of the water and, and try and cope with my problems, but I know that I, 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 the waves are breaking on my head and, and I'm struggling and, and I don't know what to do. That's number one. Keep on struggling where you are. Number two, give up. You give up and roll over. Sink to the bottom like a stone. Number three, you say, wait a minute, there is a God in heaven, a God who wants to help me, and I am not going to let the devil push me around anymore. I'm not going to let the troubles get on top of me. I am going to stand up in the name of Jesus. I am going to begin to believe again. Actually, we only have one choice. To believe again don't we that's the only choice we have to believe again so I have a word from my Heavenly Father for you here we go the Hebrew book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 amplified Bible I will not in any way fail you nor give you up nor leave you without support I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake you, nor let you down, assuredly not. Say this with me. God will not, will not, will not let me down. Say this. God will not fail me. Give me up, Please, yeah. or leave me without support. Oh, yeah. Assuredly not. not. God will not God. leave me helpless, leave me. or forsake me, oh, yeah. or let me down. Oh, yeah. Assuredly not. not. Give God praise. Come on, give Him praise. Say this, I will dare to hope again today. Say it one more time. I will dare to hope again today. And let me tell you a story from the Bible. There are three kings and they're going into battle and they run out of water. There's no water for the animals. There's no water for the men. No water for cooking or drinking or nothing. So the king of Israel is one of the three kings. And he says, is there a prophet that we can get to tell us what the word of God is for us? And they said, Elisha is here. So they call Elisha, 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 15. Now bring me a harpist, Elisha says. And while the harpist was playing, the hand of the Lord came upon Elisha and he said, This is what the Lord says. Make this valley full of ditches. For this is what the Lord says. You will neither see wind nor rain, yet this valley will be filled with water, and you and your cattle and other animals will drink. This is an easy thing in the eyes of the Lord. Turn and tell your neighbor, your problem is an easy thing. Tell him. Tell your other neighbor, your problem is an easy thing in the eyes of the Lord. Say, no problem. <laughs> no problem. Not for God. So, the next morning, about the time of the offering sacrifice, there it was. Say, there it was. Water flowing from the direction of Edom, and the land was filled with water. Now, the prophet said, Make the valley full of ditches. Make the valley full of ditches. So, why did he say they must dig some ditches? 
Because when the flood is going to come down, if there are no ditches, the water is going to go right past. But if they dig some holes, the water will fill the hole, and when it goes past, all the holes will have water. You understand that? You got it? So, God is sending supernatural supply. God is sending supernatural help. But you have to dig some ditches. Otherwise, you won't catch the supernatural supply. It'll go past you. Everybody say dig. dig. One more time. Dig. dig. You see, what would stop? when we, we, Here comes the, the supply of God. Now, if one man digs three ditches and another man digs ten ditches, who is going to get more when that supply comes? Three or ten? Ten. So, what hinders us getting the supply of God when it comes? The capacity to receive it. The capacity to receive it. Say this, Lord, increase my capacity to receive your supernatural supply. Shout dig. Shout dig. Come on, come on. You must see this. What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Dig. Have I got enough ditches yet? Dig some more. Tell your neighbor, dig some more. Here comes God's supply. Dig some ditches. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. What does it mean to dig some ditches? What does that mean to us? How do we dig ditches? You begin to pray some more. You start coming to prayer meeting 6 o'clock in the morning. Shout dig. Come on, work with me. Don't leave me out here by myself. Six o'clock in the morning, what are you doing? You're digging a ditch for the supernatural supply. You come to worship and you praise God. What are you doing? You're digging. You prepare your heart. You're digging. Shout dig. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. And then, and then, and then you give your tithe. You give your tithe. What are you doing? You're digging. Yes, yes. You see, you're digging a ditch. You give your money. You're digging a ditch. You pray. You're digging. You, you worship God. You're digging. And you get in the Bible and you begin to read the Bible. You make confession. Make confession. What are you doing? Dig. Shout dig. dig. Some more. Shout dig. dig. All right. That's what you're doing. You're busy digging. Amen. So we need to begin to dig again in Jesus' name. Every time you give an offering, every time you give an offering, you are digging a ditch for God's supernatural abundance and supply to bring you out of the hole that you're in, out of the drought that you're in, out of the valley that you're in. You dig your way out in Jesus' name. Amen. Dare to hope. Dare to hope. Now, there was a drought in Israel. It had been three and a half years, no rain. And the reason there was a drought is because of the sin of the people. So Elijah stopped the rain. He shut the heaven up. And then the book of James tells us in James chapter 5, I see this verse is on the front of your church. When I came in with a car, I see this verse. James 5, 16, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah prayed earnestly, and the heaven gave rain. My son, Hain, Hain is like the actor John Wayne. The W is an H for my son, Hain. Say Hain. Hain. When, when Miss Jackie, Pastor Jackie, was giving birth to him, Right when he got into the birth canal, the, the midwife, the midwife said to Miss Jackie, hold the baby, hold it. Don't, don't, hold the baby. The reason is the pediatrician hadn't come yet. 
the doctor for children hadn't come yet. How many mothers here today, you've given birth already have you, to children? Let me see your hand, the mothers. Show me the mothers. Come on, work with me. Not the men, you could never be mothers, just the, the women. <laughs> when the baby got here after nine months in the birth canal, what is the one thing you wanted to do? It's the name of your church, come on. All the men, what did you tell your wife to do? You didn't say hold. You know why? The wife will kill you. The wife is saying nine months inside here, enough, you are coming out. Say push. 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 Again, push. push. And when you push, here come your miracle. When Elijah prayed that fervent prayer on Mount Carmel, he was pushing and pushing and pushing until the miracle came. That's why this church is called Push. Because you're living a miracle. You're living a miracle. Shout push. Shout dig. Shout push. Now, let me show you what happens. So on top of Mount Carmel, Elijah challenges the prophets of Baal. And they build the big altar and they put the sacrifice on the altar and the stones and the, the wood, but no fire. And they say, let's call on God and the God that answers by fire to come down, let that be God. So he says to the prophets of Baal, you try first. And 800 of them, they cry, they shout, they cut themselves, they do everything they can, nothing. Nada, nux, nothing, all day. So by 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Elijah says, okay, my chance. So he says, bring some water. Put water on top of the oxen. Put water on the wood. Now, how many of you know wet wood doesn't burn? Wet wood doesn't burn. So, you know, you think he was making it hard for God because he's making the wood wet. How many of you know that's not a problem for God? Wood, wet wood is not a problem. Because this fire that's coming down is going to even burn the stones. Wet wood is not the problem. Why was he putting water on the big sacrifice? Because there had been a drought for three and a half years. There was no water in the land. And when he took the water and put it on, he was making a sacrifice of the water. He was giving something scarce to God. He was giving something that there was nothing in the land. And he said, bring the water. Put the water on. That was a sacrifice. But here's one more thing. He also knew it would be no problem after this because he was going to bring the rain. There would be plenty of water. Amen. He was looking to the future, believing for the breakthrough. So he said, don't worry, put the water on. Don't worry. Plenty of water coming. And as you know, down come the fire, burns up the oxen, burns up the stone, burns everything up. And then Elijah turns to the king. And he says to the king, in 1 Kings 18 and 41, he says, uh, Ahab, King Ahab, go up now, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. There's a sound of abundance of rain. Say this, there is a sound of abundance. One more time, there's a sound of abundance. Can you do better than that? There's a sound of abundance. Now think about your own life and say this over me, over your own life. There is a sound of abundance, of God's supply in my life. Here it comes. Dig, push. I hear the sound of abundance. Here comes the rain in Jesus' name. Yeah. 
friend in your life today, you may have sickness in your body. You may have financial problems. Hear me now. There is anointing upon me to break financial debt and financial curse over your life and to release abundance in your life like you've never had. If you want that and you want to be healed today, stay with me. Open your heart. Be ready for what God is saying to you. Okay? Please, turn to the person next to them and say, listen, this is for you. Listen. So now Elijah, in verse 42, he bows down to the ground. He gets his face between his knees and he's praying. This is the time he's praying that fervent prayer. This is the time he is seeking God. And he says to his servant, now go and look towards the sea. Go look. And he comes back and he says, there's nothing. There's nothing. Nux, nada, nothing. Like the man who planted macaroni and only the holes came up. Nothing. He says to his servant, go back. Servant comes back to him. What do you see? Your master Elijah, nothing. He says, go back. He runs back. He looks to the sea. I'm now scared to go and tell my master I see nothing. The prophet's going to be mad at me because I can see nothing. Oh, yeah. What do you see? Nothing. Go back. Oh God, please send rain. Send rain. I can't go tell him there's still nothing. What do you see? Nothing. There's nothing. Your prayer's not working. Your prayer's not working. I thought you were a prophet, but now your prayer's not working. Nothing out there. Go back. This time he's walking like Michael Jackson. <laughs> he's coming back to have a look. Nothing. Now he's going back like Michael Jackson. Don't want to look where he's going. Don't want to look where he's going. Six times. What do you see? <sighs> forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. I see nothing. Your prayer's not working. Your prayer's not working. I thought, I thought when I came to push church that when they prayed for me, it would work. I, I, I thought when Dr. Shika, when he prayed for me, I thought it'd work. Shout push. Shout push. Shout dig. Say, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. He goes back number seven. 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 Woo! Number seven. Number seven. Don't stop at six. Don't stop at six. Say push. Don't stop at six. Say dig. Don't stop at six. Say, I hear the sound of abundance in Jesus' name. Woo! What do you see? A little cloud, just the size of a man's hand. Get down the mountain, king. Get down the mountain because the rain is coming. A flood is coming. Say, a flood is coming. A tsunami. It's coming. it's coming. Dig a ditch. Yes. Dig another ditch. Yes. Dig another ditch. Yes. Here comes the flood. Yes. Don't give up. Don't give up. There's a lot to live for. Yes. There's a lot to live for. Yes. Tell your neighbor, don't give, don't give up. There's a lot yes. to live for. Tell him again, don't give up. There's a lot to live for.
in my deepest time of pain and sorrow, deep trouble in my life, the Holy Spirit, my comforter, showed me God's plan and encouraged me. On April 28, 1999, my precious wife, Pastor Jackie, had a stroke. You know what a stroke is? You know what a stroke is? Yeah? She was lying, dying in the hospital. She was going blind. She was losing her ability to speak. She said to me, will I live or die? I said to her, the doctor said, this is it. You're going. So we kissed goodbye. I thanked her for being a wonderful wife and for being a wonderful mother to the children. And she thanked me for being a good husband and a good father. You say, whoa, that is so sad, yeah? But you know what? Many people don't have the opportunity to say goodbye because on the way home somebody kills them. Husband, wife, children, somebody does something to them, accident or whatever, and you don't have a, ch a chance to say goodbye. Every morning, every morning, every day when I walk out the house, we give each other a kiss and we say goodbye. Angels go with you because we never know if we will see each other again this side of heaven. So I said to her, with your permission, I want to pray for you to live. And she said, do whatever you think is right. I laid my hands upon her and I prayed. And I said, God, this is not the reward of the righteous. This is your daughter. She served you faithfully all of these years in the ministry. She's only 49 years old. This, this should not happen to her. She's too young. When I'd finished praying, she went into coma. Couldn't see, she was blind, couldn't speak. They started to feed her with tubes in the nose. She couldn't go to the toilet, so they put a catheter up for her. They put her in the hospital. They said to me, we don't think she's going to live. She's had a terrible, terrible, terrible stroke. It's very bad. I have a picture of her brain. Can you show it for me, please? Now let me explain what you're looking at. The white section of the brain that you see is no brain. It's not there. It's gone. The other side, the gray that you look at, that's the only brain she has left. Keep the picture up, please. In the year 2006, I took her to China to get medical help. And the atheist, non-believing professors in China couldn't even speak English. They took this picture. This is from China. Because they wanted to know what they were dealing with, how bad was the problem. And the professor came to our room and he showed us the picture and this man who can't speak English, he said this, no possible, no possible for her to see. She has no brain. No possible for her to talk. She has no brain. No possible for her to walk. She has no brain. The brain that does that is gone. He said, miracle. Miracle. Everybody say miracle. miracle. It's been 18 years. 18 years. We have traveled to 100 countries. We have been to Russia, to China, to Korea, 
to France, all over Europe, Germany, South America, Brazil, you name the countries. We've been to the Eiffel Tower in Paris. We've been to Iceland and the furthest parts of the north where we saw the midnight sun. We had to put sunglasses on at midnight. We've been to the North and South Pole and round and round the world we've been to 100 countries. We've been to Greece, Rome, the Parthenon. We've even walked on the Great Wall of China. We even cl climbed over the ruins of Pompeii in Italy. Everybody say, but God. You can do better. But God. But God. One more time. But God. Can you shout, but God? But God. When man said it can't be done, God said it can. I want to tell you something. My wife has half a brain. I'm here to tell you that a woman with a half a brain is better than a man with a whole brain. How many were here when we came two and a half years ago and my wife was with you? How many remember that? Okay, well, you're a new bunch. All right. Say this, I believe, I believe. everything's going to be all right. Gonna Come on, one more time. I believe, I believe. everything, everything. is going to be all right in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. So, the Armenian army comes against the city of Samaria and they get around the city and they are warring with the city. So the city is shut up, completely shut up. Nobody's getting in, nobody's getting out. They use up all the water, they use up all the food, everybody's starving inside there. They, the inflation is terrible, you can't afford to buy anything. There's no food. Things are so bad, this is a story in the Bible I'm going to show you now. Two mothers get together and they say, let's make a contract. Let's eat our children. Let's eat our babies. True story. So the first day they kill this mother's baby and they eat the baby. The next day, the other mother says, no way. Uh-uh, you're not killing my baby. She backs out of it. So the news gets to the king. The king is so mad at what's going on. You know what the king says? The king says, bring Elijah here. I'm going to kill him because it's God's fault. It's your fault that we have this problem. You see, church, that's a sign of a sick heart. Because a sick heart blames God. It's God's fault. It's God's fault. How many know it's not God's fault? God is with you. He's not against you. God is for you. God is trying to make a way in the wilderness for you. God is trying to improve your situation. God is not, God is not resisting you. God is opening the way for you. And Elijah comes to the king. And we pick the story up in 2 Kings 7 verse 1. Elisha replies and he says, Listen to the message from the Lord. This is what the Lord says. By this time tomorrow in the market of Samaria, five quarts of choice flour will cost only one piece of silver, and ten quarts of barley grain will only cost one piece of silver. When? By this time tomorrow. Shout this. By this time tomorrow. By this time tomorrow. Come on. By this time tomorrow. I heard your confession this morning. The confession this morning had said, this year, this month, this week, this day, shout by this time tomorrow. By this time tomorrow. Turn and tell somebody by this time tomorrow. By this time tomorrow. God is going to change my world. God is going to change my world. So there's a man that's close to the king. He's the officer of the king. He says to the king, in verse 2, he says to the king, that couldn't happen even if. That couldn't happen even if. Do you see that? That couldn't happen even if. Church, this is what I'm asking you. 
What are you thinking right now when God says by this time tomorrow? Are you thinking that couldn't happen even if? Is that what you're thinking? Hear me now. Hear me now. That's the devil speaking to you. He's trying to take the seed of God's word out. He's trying to bring you back to doubt and unbelief. Because in your mind, you're hearing, not because not possible, not possible. You don't know my circumstances. You don't know, I don't have a job. I don't have any work. They're taking away my house. I don't have a car. don't have any transport. My children's on drugs. My, alco my father, my husband is alcoholic. That couldn't happen if. That couldn't happen even if. That couldn't happen if. He has a word from, he has a word from the Holy Spirit. Shut up. Tell those thoughts to shut up. Come on. Don't let the devil talk to you. Tell the devil, shut up. <laughs> devil, don't you talk to me in church. Shut up. shut up. I'm here to hear the voice of God, not your dumb voice, you dumb devil. Don't let the devil talk you out of God's blessing. Don't let those demons talk you out of God's prosperity. Don't let the demons talk you out of God's purpose for your life. Don't let the devil talk you out of getting back into God's plan for your life. Don't let the devil put thoughts in your mind. You can't do it. You can't make it. God, it's not by your strength. It's not by your strength. It's by his strength. It's not by might nor strength, but by my spirit, says the Lord. It's by the anointing of God in this house that you are delivered. Yeah, if you're going to clap, clap. Shout, dig. Come on, say dig. dig. Say push. 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 Well, uh, Elisha, say, Elijah, Elisha says to this man, you know what? The Lord's going to do it. You're going to see it happen, but you're not going to be able to eat any of it. Now, inside Sumeria, there are four lepers. And the four lepers get together and they say, why do we stand here till we die? Let's get up and go to the enemy. Maybe the enemy will have pity on us and give us some food and some water and we can live. If the enemy kill us, it doesn't matter because we're going to die anyway. We're lepers. If we stay here, we die. If we go there, we die. You see here, listen church, some people here today, you feel just like that. It doesn't matter anymore. If I stay here, I die. If I go there, I die. I'm here to tell you God is moving supernaturally. God is doing supernatural things. Don't give up. 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 Go six times. Don't stop at six. Don't stop at six. Go to seven. Go till you see the cloud. So the lepers, they go across. And they get there and all the enemy has run away. Nobody's there. The treasure, the food, the horses, everything, water, everything. Because God made a noise. And these, and these people thought, these people thought that it was an army coming to attack them. So they ran away. They ran away. You see, all God has got to do is go, boo. He just got to make a noise. God just got to make a noise. He doesn't even have to show up. Boo. <laughs> and your enemy going to run away. <laughs> and they're going to leave all your treasure and all the water. They're going to leave everything. Say boo. boo. <laughs> That's it. I'm How many understand the Hamba Wana? Yeah? Hamba Wana. You understand that? Yeah, yeah. You know what you must say to that devil? Futsek. <laughs> Futsek. <laughs> and he run like a little dog, run away. And the, leper, the lepers, they get there and they get all the food and they start, they, oh, you know what, we need to go tell the people there's lots of food. They go back and tell the king there's lots of food, all the enemy ran away. So the king says to his man, yeah, he says, you know what? You go stand by the gate and you control the crowd. And uh, not so much. Here come the crowd, stample him to death. Boom, 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 boom. Done. Dead. He heard, he saw, he didn't eat. Listen now, listen now. Please listen carefully. 
Don't stay in unbelief. Don't stay in unbelief and reject God's promise to you today. Because God's promise to you today will bring you into His plan and His purpose for your life. God is not done with you. He has a plan for you. Don't stay in unbelief. Come on. Come on. Take the word of God and run in Jesus' name. Run. I have a prophecy for you from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit says, Change is on the way. Things will not stay the same. God is a God of change. He's a God of increase. He's a God of healing. He's a God of deliverance. He's a God who brings abundance. You can hear it. Abundance is coming. By this time tomorrow, change will hit you in a supernatural way. Your life will never be the same. The days that the devil has held you captive are over. The days are over. The days are over. God, God is moving on your behalf. Give Him praise. Give Him praise. Come on, praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him for the change. Shout dig. Shout push. Shall I hear the sound of abundance? Change is on the way. By this time, tomorrow, God has moved for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout it out. I will not. I will not. I will not. Fail you. Give you up. Or leave you without support. Say, God will not. God will not. God will not. Leave me helpless. Nor forsake me. Nor let me down. Surely not. God's got my hand. He's taking me over. By this time tomorrow, I'm free. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Pastor said I must keep going. This is the only church in the world when they tell you to keep going. This is the only church in the world where they tell the preacher to push. <laughs> push, preacher, push. Push, preacher. Congregation wants some more. When my wife was in hospital, 60 days, 60 days she's in hospital, still trying to recover. We used to do ballroom dancing. I don't know if Pastor Shiko is going to ever have me back now, but my wife and I used to do the dancing, this lovely dancing. Do you know what I'm talking about? The waltz, the cha-cha, you know that? You sure? Is it okay? Can I preach some more? So we used to do the dancing. My wife is lying dying in hospital. I want to encourage her to live. I want to give her hope. I want her to dare to hope again. I come to the hospital. And I bring her dancing shoes. 
Special shoes for dancing. Pretty, huh? Pretty. I bring the shoes. I come into the hospital. I come to the wall. She's lying in bed here. Come to the wall. Take a hammer. Nails. On the wall. Shoes. On the wall. So she can see from her bed. We'll dance again. I take a big pen, like a cocky pen, black one. And there's a white board here, white board. And I write on the board, if you have the courage, I have the faith. Fight, girl, fight. Don't die, fight. I'm hoping with you. I'm trusting God for you. Don't give up. Can you be courageous? I will believe God. If you will fight, I'm standing with you. You're not going to die in Jesus' name. Last year, we were married 44 years last year. This year, 45 in July. So on our anniversary, I take her on a date. I said, we're going on a date. I take the wheelchair. We have a wheelchair in our house in case we go for long distances. If I take her to the beach, I put in a wheelchair so I can take her because she can't walk too far. She doesn't like the wheelchair because she likes to walk. I put the wheelchair. She says, why are you taking the wheelchair? I said, it's a surprise date. Okay, okay. We drive into town. We park. I get the wheelchair. I said, please sit in the chair. I'm walking on the street. Walking for two blocks. Walking, walking, walking. Here in front of me is the Arthur Murray Dance Studio. That's where we learned how to dance. It's called the Arthur Murray Dance Studio. I push the wheelchair inside. All the people are dancing. I push onto the dancing floor. Open the chair. Pick her out the chair. I take her in my arms. We can do this. We can do this. And we begin to dance. Just like this. Just like this. 17 years. We're dancing. Everybody say, but God. But God. What is your problem? Why do you want to give up? Do you think you should give up? On Friday, I took her up on top of Table Mountain in the chair. Are you hearing me? Can you dare to hope again? Dare to hope again. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Say this with me. God is for me. God is for me. Not against me. He has plans for me. That are bigger. Than anything. I've ever dreamt of. God has a new thing. For me. A new beginning where hope is restored. God has made a new road for me in my wilderness. A new river of life is flowing. I hear the sound of abundance.
In Jesus' name. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Church, God wants to heal some people here. He wants to heal some people. If you're sick in your body, if you're sick in your body in any way, stay standing. Stay standing. If you're sick or you have problems of any kind in your body, stay standing. The rest can sit down. The sick, stay standing. Those who have got pain, stay standing. The drug addict, stay standing. Those that are blind, stay standing. Those that are addicted to drugs, stay standing. The rest can be seated. The sick are the ones standing. The ones who need God to heal them are standing. See, the Holy Spirit told me. The Holy Spirit tells me. Here comes the Holy Spirit. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. To restore your hope. He's moving across this auditorium. The moment that you know you're healed, come out and come to the front. The moment that you know that you're healed. The moment you know that you're healed. If your eye, blind eye opens, come. If your deaf ear opens, come. If the pain leaves your body, come. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Use the faith in this house now. Use the faith in this house. People with backache are being healed. People got a short leg is being healed right now. Somebody got a deaf ear, you're being healed right now in Jesus' name. Somebody got a, a neck that's stiff, you can't move it, stuck like this to the side. Come, you're being healed in Jesus' name. There's somebody here, you've got a blind one eye. It's open right now, Jesus' name. It's open right now. You come out, you can come out. Come down here, you can come down. You can come down. You've been healed right now in Jesus' name. The miracle is happening, the miracle is happening, the miracle is happening. Right now, across this place, miracle is happening in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Test yourself. Test yourself. Test yourself. If you had the pain, test yourself. There's a lady, you've been to the doctor, you've got lumps in your breast. You've got lumps in your breast. Doctor said you've got lumps in your breast. Test it right now, you find it's gone. It's gone. Come right now. It's gone. Jesus' name. It's gone. Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Test it. Go ahead, test it. The Spirit of God is moving right now. Wave your hand at me. Wave your hand at me if you know God has touched you. Your body has been healed. Wave your hand at me quickly. Wave your hand at me. Jesus' name, Jesus' name, you know that you're being healed. You know that you've been healed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You've been healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The people that are screaming, that's Pastor, Chico, that's Pastor Chico's case. Pastor Chico will take care of that. I'm not here for screamers, okay? I'm not yet for the deliverance ministry. That we leave to the doctor. Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now hear me, hear me. Financial miracles are coming down right now, right now. Financial miracles are coming. New jobs, new jobs are coming. People who don't have jobs, people don't have jobs. Here come new jobs. Here come increase. Here comes the increase. Here comes the increase. I hear the sound of abundance. I hear the sound of abundance. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so you need a motor car. You need a motor car. You need transportation. Here comes the vehicle. Trust God. Here it comes. Take it. 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 Take it in Jesus' name. Take it in Jesus' name. Come on. Come on. Come on. Use your faith. Use your faith. Use your faith. Oh, 
Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. But by spirit, says the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What was the problem? What was the problem? Sick with anemia. Yeah, he was. Amen. And we thank you, Lord, for that healing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for that in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. What was the problem? Your heart was what? It was painful. Now I'm okay now. Yes, amen. Thank you, Lord. I believe that in Jesus' name. Good word. Good word. Thank you, Lord. All right, Dr. Shiko, let me hand back your great congregation. We love you. So much. So much. Pastor Shiko. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Put your hand together for Jesus. Put your hand together for the great works, for the great word. I say put your hand together and to the Lord. And to the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may sit down. Your healing shall remain permanent. Amen. Your deliverance shall remain permanent. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. 